Game of Thrones, Season 7, Episode 1, Dragon's Tone Review, bloodiest show on TV can still shock and surprise. Warning, contains spoilers. How much simpler the world seemed back in June 2016, when the sixth season of Game of Thrones was drawing to a close. After 13 months of real-world political bombshells and power shifts, and the rise of a would-be dynasty who will seemingly stop at nothing to gain and hold on to power, one might wonder whether the biggest, bloodiest, most dragon-heavy show on television would still have the ability to shock and surprise. The answer, happily, is yes. Originally adapted from George R. R. Martin's series of books, A Song of Ice and Fire, the source material was spent by season 5, and even the most ardent fans no longer know which direction the series, now its own entirely original story, will take. The seventh season of HBO's epic fantasy kicks off with what, at first, would seem to be a flashback. Grizzled, gal traddled old Walder Frey, David Bradley, is congratulating his men on their nifty work in mass murder at the Red Wedding of season 3, and rewarding them with a feast. We know that Frey is dead now, his throat slit last season by Arya Stark, Maisie Williams, after she'd fed him a meat pie made of his own two sons, and it quickly becomes clear that this isn't a flashback at all, but, instead, a Jonestown-style massacre, the assembled Freys choking to death on poisoned flagons of wine. Having graduated from her grueling internship with the faceless men, Arya is now unstoppable in her quest to avenge her family. And as she later reveals to a singing soldier, a slightly comedic cameo by the musical guest star, Ed Sheeran, she's heading not north to Winterfell, but south to King's Landing, to kill the Queen. With just 13 episodes to go, spread across two seasons, there has been much talk of an increase in pace in the penultimate season, and a rapid jumping up of tension. However, though lush and cinematic as ever, this opening episode features no battles, no large set pieces of the sort the show has become renowned for, but primarily sets the scene, with competing houses and their armies all finally converging on Westeros to slug it out for the Iron Throne. It would, in fairness, have been tough to maintain the momentum or the body count of the final two climactic episodes of Season 6, The Battle of the Bastards, A Slaughter on a Psalm-like Scale, and the explosive season finale, in which Cersei Lannister, Lena Hetty, blew up the Great Sept of Baylor, wiping out eleven regular cast members in the process. Having subsequently claimed the Iron Throne for herself, she's commissioned a new decorative floor in her King's Landing courtyard, an enormous painted map of her empire, like a game of giant risk. It takes her brother, lover Jaime, Nicolaj Costawald A., to point out that she's not quite Queen of the Seven Kingdoms yet, three, at best, dash and to sound a note of caution, she has no allies. But Cersei, as ever, has a few irons in the fire, first up, the deliciously mad Euron Grey Joy, Pylowas Beak, hellbent on murdering his niece and nephew, who have defected to support Daenerys, and attempting to woo Cersei with brags about his massive fleet. Ling tension is also bubbling up in the north, where Jon Snow, Kit Harington, and his half-sister Sansa Stark, Sophie Turner, are ruling Winterfell, having liberated their family home from Ramsay Bolton. Jon is adapting to the role of king quite easily, but adjusting to Sansa's newfound position at his right hand less well. The current power-sharing agreement looks uncertain to last long, particularly with the Machiavellian Littlefinger, Aidan Gillen whispering foul nothings in Sansa's ear. There are new faces, including Jim Broadbent as the Archmester Marwyn, who is training Samuel Tarley, John Bradley, at the Citadel, and the welcome return of Jorah, Ian Glenn, though he's apparently not yet found the cure for his nasty case of grayscale. But one might expect an episode called Dragon's Tone to belong predominantly to Daenerys, Amelia Clark. And we do, eventually, witness her, having finally crossed the narrow sea with her trio of dragons, Thousands Strong Fleet, and her loyal entourage, including an unusually silent Tyrion Lannister, Peter Dinklage, landing at the imposing ancestral home of House Targaryen, a great grey hogwa already piled.